Docmos. What is it and how do you self-host it using Docker? Well, I'll show you exactly how. So if you're new to my videos, I'll just ex quickly explain how I go about doing these. So I'll just show you through Docmos first and I'll show you, we'll talk about it. I'll show you the instance I have installed. And then in the second part, I'll walk you through the whole installation process as well. And all of the documentation will be in the link in the description as well. So go check that out. And if you get stuck or anything like that, there's a Discord link as well. Jump in there and I'll, it's like a live chat with the community um, and I'm on there as well. So we can help you. So if you are familiar with tools, like Notion, that is what Docmos is like, right? It's a collaboration tool that you can use for, you know, documents and sharing and a whole bunch of stuff. So if we come down here, you can see here, we've got real-time collaboration, right? So that's the great thing with this. So let's say if you're working on a team project or anything like this, you can invite users and they can collaborate if you're working on code or whatever you know a bunch of projects that's a great thing with docmos is that it's, you get that benefit of notion and it honestly it looks a lot like notion uh so if you're familiar with it then it's all the great benefits of notion but you've you self-host it you're in control of the data and everything so you've got some cool built-in features, you know, like diagrams, you've got the permission system, like I said before, so you can invite people, you can say, hey, look, they can only read it, or they can edit, you know, there's a bunch of things. You can have spaces, I'll show you more of this, what this looks like in a second, so if you've got different teams or departments, depending on your use case, of course. And then you can have groups as well, so not only are you going to have spaces, you can make groups as well, so you get that fine granular control of uh, access. The comments, this is really great, especially if you are working with other people, they can just add comments on certain parts and you can have a discussion inside Docmos on what you're working on. Page history, the search, nested pages, all of that typical stuff you get with a sort of wiki documentation sort of software. So this is my instance that I have all set up at the moment. So you can see at the top here, it just says docmos.techdocs.nz. Now this is actually still just running locally. This isn't exposed. I'm uh, using a reverse proxy uh, to be able to make this available. If you're not sure what I mean by that, I'll have a link somewhere in the corner uh, that explains how I do this. But as you can see here straight away, when you come onto uh, your Docmos, you'll see that you kind of have a space and then you can see your recently updated stuff. And we've got our user in the top right hand corner. So I have a space that I've made and it's just called general. So if we come in here, we can see that we have pages on the left and I can make as many of these as I like. We have a search function. We have the space settings if you want to make any configuration if you want to add people and stuff like that you can do that here and of course you can just make a new page so as we go there it's called untitled but as soon as you type a name in that's what the page uh, name will be called on the left so we could call this um video test right and if i hit enter you can see that's now been updated and then you can have sub pages by just you know clicking the plus and if you hit a forward slash, you can see all the cool things you can add in here. You can add videos, code snippets. Uh, if you use Draw.io or Excalidraw, I have a video on that as well. Uh, if you want to add your Excalidraw diagrams to this, you can do that here. And then, of course, embedding and all of that good stuff as well. So, for example, if I just quickly paste in the Docker Compose for this, you can see here, we've got it uh in here and then if you wanted to we've got the comments here so we could add comments on certain parts of this if we wanted so let's say oh um we're going to have this long secret here i could add a comment if i was collaborating collaborating with people and i could say hey look uh make sure to change this right and hit save and then anyone else i worked with if i invited them on here they could reply and you can have a discussion all through here again if you're familiar with notion then this will be uh not anything new to you now if we come into the top right hand corner here where it says my username and then if we go into workspace settings you can see that we've got a bit more going on here now so looking at the profile you can see here you know we can change our photo if we want we can update our name we've got our email address and if you need to change your password you can now another good note to add so looking at their official documentation as well just to quickly uh, talk about something is that you can configure email support as well. So for inviting users uh, for password resets and all of that stuff, you can make sure you have that. So you, you know, people, you're not managing all the users yourself. You can have that automated. People can reset their passwords and stuff as well. So you can set up your SMTP uh, as needed. Looking at preferences, we can change our theme. So if we want to use a dark theme, we can, which is nice. I know a lot of people would like to have dark themes, but by default, it's just a light theme. You can change the, the full width if you would rather have a full width page rather than it kind of like broken up. 
and then we can change to workspace settings as well so this is the workspace i'm in and it was just called tech docs we have members here so again we can invite members if we want and you can change their permissions so if we wanted to invite a member we can invite them by an email address and then add them by groups but the good thing here is you could always just uh, set their password and then just tell them what their password is as well if you don't want to have the email set up we can set up the groups as well so if you know so you can have like a certain set of teams developers and stuff like that and then your spaces so i had the general one but let's say if you've got a few projects on the go or whatever you however you'd like to break these up you can have all those spaces so if i just call this one um youtube maybe i want something dedicated for my youtube channel i'll create that space and then if i come back to docmos you can see now i have two i have the general and i have youtube and youtube has no pages in it but the general one does have those pages that i was playing around with before right I think you kind of get the general idea though, right? It's it's like Notion, it's a collaboration tool, uh, it's a documentation software, and you can just, yeah, you can do as much stuff as you like. And the great thing about this is it's got the whole collaboration features um, and yeah, and it's all self-hostable. So how do you self-host this? So what I normally do is I have a Docker Compose file that I've grabbed from here. So this is their example one, right? They've got a Docker Compose here, which you could grab and a link to this will be in the description. But if you're new around here, I also have my documentation website as well. And any of the videos I cover, I generally will write up some documentation for it as well. So I'll have a link to this as well. So if we come to the docmos, we can see we've, I've got the compose file here uh, that I'm using. And I have a full breakdown of exactly what you need to change uh, and what's happening on each line. We'll cover this as well. Um, and how to generate you know the app secrets you need and how to get it all up and running so make sure to go check that out as well but let's go and get this all set up for ourselves and i'll walk you through the process so what the process is going to look like is we will go and get the docker compose file all set up and we'll go over it and then we will deploy a instance and it will just be running locally and then once it's running locally uh, if you want to get that all up and running behind a reverse proxy again i have that video there but again or if you get stuck jump into the discord and i can help you as well so let's jump to my server Right, so we are connected to my sandbox server, right? So if I do an ls, we've got nothing in here. And the way I like to structure my files for when I'm doing my Docker deployments is that I, will, I have a folder called Docker, and then in there, I have a folder called docmos. And then in here will live the compose file, and if it has any other relevant information, it will also live in here as well. But for this one, we will just be using the Docker compose file. Right, so if you're following along, what we're going to do is come over to my documentation website, and you can click the little copy button here in the top right-hand corner and this will copy it to your clipboard now coming back to our server what we can do is we can do a nano docker hyphen compose dot yaml right and once we've made that file we can paste in that clipboard and we'll go to the top and i'll walk you through what you need to do so we're going to be using the docmost latest image and our service of docmost will rely on a database and redis right we don't have to worry about this too much it's all just going to work behind the scenes for us when we deploy this now the app url is important Okay, now ideally, if you're going to be collaborating with others, you're not going to be running this on a local IP address, you're going to be using a domain name. Now, if you just want to use this locally, that is fine. What you can do here is that you can just set this here, the local IP address, right? So like 192.168.68.112, and then you can have it running on 3090. Now, this will work fine, you can deploy it and you'll be able to access it this way. But again, if you're wanting this public and you're wanting to share this, then make sure that this actually reflects the app URL you're wanting to use. So what I'm going to do in my case is I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put the domain name that I have, which is docmost.techdocs.nz. Again, if you get any questions on this, feel free to ask me. I'm pretty available on the Discord. Now the app secret. What we need to do is we can generate this and I have a command in the documentation for you. So if we come to my documentation, I'll just zoom in a bit for you. Where it says app secret, if all we need to do is actually just run this, open SSL, rand hex32. Now you can also just like chuck that into chat GPT, ask chat GPT to make you one or whatever if you don't have this installed. But for an example, I can just paste this in and copy that there. It's just spat it out for me. And I paste it right there. And there we go. That's my app secret, okay? You don't need to remember this or anything. This is just an, uh, a secret for the application itself. Now, looking at the database URL, we don't actually have to worry about this too much at all. The only thing here is that we need to make sure that you're changing that there, right? That's your password for the database. So strong underscore DB underscore password. That is the password for the database connection. Now, please change this. Change it to anything you like. I'm just going to change this 
just a testing or something just for the sake of this video but again please make that something secure the redis url we don't need to change this because it's going to be talking to the redis service and that's on 6379 that's the port now the ports on this side so this is the port that's going to be exposed on our network right that's how we will be interacting with the service it's going to be running on port 3090 if that port is already used feel free to change it to something else uh 3000 is the default so you could have it on 3000 or whatever don't change this side just change this left hand side the restart flag here is set to unless stopped so even if your host restarts this container will automatically start back up unless you specifically stopped it we've got the volumes here so we're going to create a docmost volume so we don't need to do anything here this will create a docker volume for us then we've got the database here so looking at the database same sort of process we don't need to change any of this stuff here except for the password so if you change it above which you should have um, make sure it matches so we need that there is testing and this is also going to have a db underscore data volume and then you've got the redis as well same sort of process and then all of the volumes are declared at the bottom Again, this is all broken down in the documentation if you want to read a bit more about it. And now we can save it and close it. Now, if we do an LS, we can see it's there, right? It's all good. So once you've got that there, all we need to do is run a docker compose up hyphen D. This will create everything in that compose file and it will stand it up. And the hyphen D means it runs in the background in detached mode so we can continue doing other things while our uh, container is all up and running. So that looks good. It looks like everything started. So we should be able to connect to it. Now again, I have all of this running behind a reverse proxy, so I can connect to it via the domain name, but I, I should also be able to connect to it via the IP address. And let me show you that. So for example, if I put the IP address in there of my server and we do 3090, that should connect us to the service as well. HTTP and I hit enter. There we go. We can see that we've connected to docmos right and we're on the local ip address so if you want to use it locally that's how you can do it but when you like share pages and stuff it's no doubt going to use the app url you've specified so uh, you might get a bit of weird matching there so if you're going to make this public and you're going to want collaboration you're going to need the domain name so essentially if my reverse proxy is all set up properly i should still be able to do uh docmost docmost .tickdocs hit enter and i should get the same patch which i do and you can see now we are getting the create workspace. So I can set up a workspace name here. This is the same process for anyone starting off with Docmos. So we can call this uh, YouTube and we'll set a strong password and we'll hit set up workspace. And there we go. We're back to exactly what I was showing you before. So you will have a general workspace, which is the first one. And then you can make as many workspaces as you like. So if we come into general, uh, if you don't see anything it's just because you need to toggle the sidebar on the left here so here you go and now we can create a page right so that is docmost it's pretty straightforward uh, the process is pretty straightforward all the the instructions everything like that will be in the description if you get stuck please come into the discord or ask in the youtube comments i'm more than happy to help uh but thank you so much for watching i hope you all had a fantastic holiday break and a happy new year as well time of recording this it's the first of january but yeah thank you so much for all the support thank you so much to all the youtube members you guys are awesome i really appreciate the support and i will see you in the next video have a good one everyone Bye bye